Suffering is sometimes what leads to the greatest highs in running. But sometimes when you're out there just hammering and pushing yourself, and in the middle of that, you'll kind of just get these chills and you just like feel really good. It's only when you're kind of making yourself suffer that you get that high. I'm Sarah Sellers. I'm a professional runner and full-time nurse anesthetist here in Tucson. I'm from Ogden, Utah. I grew up on the Wasatch Front. So beautiful trails, beautiful mountains in my backyard. And I started running pretty early with my parents going on the trails behind our house in the mornings. So I just started joining them on the trail runs and <laughs> I'm sure I slowed them down, but they were always super supportive. I just fell in love with running, with being on the trails. Kind of started competing in middle school and high school. I definitely wasn't the fastest runner on the team, but by my senior year of high school, I'd won a few state championships and it wasn't really this realization like, oh, I have all this natural talent. It was just like, I knew that I loved the process of running, I loved being outside. And then the work that I put in really paid off. My first marathon was Huntsville, Utah, and that was last fall. I hadn't done any marathon-specific training for it. It was actually held on the last day that you could qualify for Boston. And I won the marathon for women's division, and I've never been so sore in my life. <laughs> I couldn't run for like two weeks after, but kind of gave me a glimpse that I thought if I could put in a good block of training that a marathon could be something that I thought I could succeed at. I'm running 90 to 100 miles a week. The vast majority of my miles are on the roads or on the Tucson Loop Path. I would rather run the cold <laughs> any day, but I think running in the heat has been beneficial for me. Being an elite distance runner does require a lot of sacrifices. You're either injured or almost injured. I had several stress fractures. One stress fracture that ended my collegiate career. It could have potentially never healed. There was one run, a 14 mile run. I started off in shorts and it started raining. I tripped, really scraped my knee hard. and Pretty hypothermic. I had no nutrition. It was like, like turned to snow. And I remember my legs hurt so bad. That was probably the coldest I've ever been but it taught me that I could do hard things. The morning of the Boston Marathon, there was snow on the ground, yet it was raining. I think I was wearing like five layers on top and bottom because I didn't want to waste energy shivering. My number one goal was a time goal. I wanted to run faster than 237 and in those conditions, I knew that would likely be impossible. Once the gun went off, the conditions are just crazy. and <laughs> You feel like you're in a car wash. The wind, I think, was 20, 25 miles an hour and direct headwind the whole way. But I just tucked right in, kind of to the back of this group of elite women. And after about a mile or two, the lead group broke off and we started breaking into smaller groups. And now things are blowing sideways. Now, along with the rain, you can see the temperature is minus one Celsius. And somewhere after halfway, another of the elite women passed me, and I went with her. She was running a pace that I didn't think I could keep. I was pretty tired at that point. I didn't know how I'd feel the last three miles of the marathon, but I thought, like, I'm just going to stick with her. So I stuck with her for about eight miles and then with about three miles to go, um, just went for it. I was kind of delirious at that point, don't remember a lot of the details, but then with the home stretch, I felt like I was just in a screaming tunnel of people. I remember thinking like, everyone's super excited, I must be doing really well, but then the first place of the men's division passed me with about 150 meters to go. I thought like, they're cheering for him, they're not cheering for me. And here is Sarah Sellers of the United States. I felt like I'm somewhere in the mid-pack of women. And then I crossed the finish line and I asked the race volunteers, what place am I, what place am I? And one of them said I was second, and like I just had to have her keep repeating it because 
thought there's no way I was second. <laughs> That's not possible. Like, that doesn't happen. And my next thought was I need to go find someone that I know and verify that this is real life <laughs> and that that actually happened. And my husband actually was jumping up and down and like, yelling, you're second in the freaking Boston Marathon. <laughs> That's, I think, when it hit me that was real. On that day, the opportunity that presented itself was very different. Second place wasn't going to go to someone who could run in good conditions. It was going to go to me, who didn't necessarily have the right credentials to get second, but my body held up under the elements. It's given me a lot of faith in myself because there's definitely runs more often than I'd like to admit where you don't feel like running. You don't feel good. But just getting out there and doing it is a success. I'm awake, I'm away, I'm a dream. I'm awake, I'm away, I'm a dream. I'm awake, I'm awake, and my dream is...